please? Where's the flag? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Nothing like starting the new year off right. It's all right, I guess. Well, Reese is, Reese is not the Canadian flag. So. <laughs> right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Under God. Indivisible, Morning, everybody. Uh, as always, please uh, have your cell phones turned off. For those of you that may not know, uh, Kurt McCullough has resigned his position on the board over the uh, holidays and also, of course, resigned his position as uh, president of the board. And we'll have this meeting, we have a quorum, and next meeting we should be installing a new new board member, so it's a hiccup. I do want to say that this board thanks Kurt for his four years of service to, to Sun and Lake, and particularly uh, serving as president this past year, which was far from uh, calm so we wish him well and Larry I take uh, he's recovering well he is he is doing very well um, our next meeting is January 22nd and I would remind you that that is the annual landowners meeting so we will um, convene the board we will recess the landowners meeting will then uh, commence, and the one thing I always is on the agenda is sort of the, the state of the district um, uh, presentation by our general manager. So, again, please remember that uh, the landowners meeting. Okay, uh, consent agenda. We had the minutes of the regular Board of Supervisors meeting on Friday, November 13th, and Friday, December 11th. Treasurer's report and golf financials. I have a resolution. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Discussion from the board. Uh, let's see. I saw Jim. Where's Jim Kurtzborn? Um, I got the financials, uh, didn't get the summary sheet. Was that message didn't get to your people on the golf uh, monthly report? Remember we talked about a summary sheet? Jim and I have talked about that, and we're going to implement it for, we're going to do this quarterly, and um, I, haven't, I haven't sent the sheet out yet. So Jim and I discussed that. We will not be doing a, a summary sheet on a monthly basis. We'll be doing it quarterly, and our staff will be handling that. Well, I'm not thrilled about that, but... I'll we'll be sending that out in a separate email. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Uh, no board discussion. Any discussion from the public? Bring it back to the board. Allison? Supervisor Hulbert? Yes. Supervisor Halbig? Yes. Supervisor White? Yes. Supervisor Miller? Yes. Uh, first item on the agenda, or the action agenda, is resolution number 0108012016. That is a resolution of the Sun and Lake of Sebring Improvement District requesting the Board of County Supervisors, Highlands County, to amend the Enabling Act of the Sun and Lake Improvement District by amending section 998, that's in our charter, to increase the maximum amount allowable for a project before the requirement for competitive bidding is triggered from 10000 up to 25000 now. Do I have a resolution? A motion to the resolution. Motion, motion to approve. I'll second that. Okay, board discussion. Well, I have a question. It's been bugging me ever since we started this thing. Um... I was quite comfortable with the 10,000 limit, and everybody seemed to want to change it. And the prevailing argument is that, well, the board will review 
uh, these contracts, right, before uh, they're implemented. Correct. Well, you know how that happens. We get a, a contract. It's executed. So what do we have to review? I mean, we don't really have review power. If it was, if it was certain that this board would see those proposed contracts prior to any implementation of the contract, then I would feel a lot better. But I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I guess, of this after-the-fact business. I think that happens because the resolution specifies that it's a contract. The contract is uh, signed or reviewed by the general manager, uh, and if the resolution is changed to reflect the board having review over the contract, uh, am I correct, David? Or G generally, we have there's there's two ways that we we do it or have done it in the past. Number one, if it's a if it's a request for a proposal and the bids come in, then that bid amount, you know, let's say it's a it's a hundred thousand dollar project, the board can grant the general manager the power to negotiate the contract to the limits of the bid amount. And then if, if once that contract is negotiated within that price range, the general manager can execute it. Alternatively, or also what we have done before, is if we have a contract that someone wants executed, we bring that to the board and we say, this is a contract that's been proposed, the board reviews it, and if the board wants to, the president of the board signs it. But those are the two ways that it generally happens. Well, considering some of the... Um I guess the actions the last couple of years, and again, it's not a staff situation. Um, I would just feel more comfortable if we would have that that review power. Oh, absolutely, we can do that. And like I say, this this does not change though. Anything above ten thousand dollars still has to be brought to the board for approval. All this does is what determines when we actually have to trigger the city. That's the key. But is it brought to the board as an executed contract or no? No. You're sure of that? Yes, sir. Yeah. If it's if it's over ten thousand dollars, it has to be brought to the board for approval. What I'm saying is, is let's say that someone proposed a, a that the job was estimated to be fifty thousand dollars. We put that out for bid, and we get three bids. You know, sixty five, fifty, and forty five. We bring those three bids to the board and say, this is the low bidder. This is who we recommend we execute the contract with. The board says, okay, you know, we approve the $45,000. Have the general manager negotiate that contract as to the actual specific terms. But generally, since the board's main concern is the finances, you know, if, if the board is happy with the, the amount of the bid, then the, general, the board can give the power to the general manager to execute the contract. If you want every contract to be executed by the president of the board, we can absolutely do that. No. Um, but I, I do want to be able, I think this board needs to, needs to be able to review these proposed contracts from the standpoint of the protection clauses that we talked about, remember, Tanya, at earlier meetings when we were talking about purchasing and so forth, and you said everything was in there. Uh, that tennis contract still, still really bugs me because I thought we had an ironclad clause on discovery and uh, due diligence and it just disappeared. So I guess I'm a little gun shy on that. How, how do you guys feel? Well, as long as it comes back for review, I mean, uh, the general manager can, can st still execute it, or the president of the board can execute it. But the, what I think what Dick's getting at is, like, for the for a final look at it and say, put our blessing on it before before it's signed. I mean, that's and if it has to be put in the resolution initially, then I guess that's what we have to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's what, we can absolutely do it that way. Okay, does that change anything in this resolution we have in front no, of us? Sir. Okay, and Tanya, we're on the same page. <coughs> yes, just realize though okay. that there is there'll be a time delay in, in when the contracts start. Believe me, in the public sector, everything is a time okay. delay. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, public comment. Tom Costey, resident. Um, at the last meeting when we were talking about this uh, threshold and mirroring the county's uh, $25,000 threshold, um, there's a difference between the, a bid project 
and a regular project that uh, requires quotations. Uh, the county uh, purchasing policy, which is on their website, indicates that for outside purchases between $750 and $5,000, documented verbal quotations have to accompany the requisition, which goes to purchasing before purchase order is issued. And if, it's, if they are not, if those documented quotations are not a part of the requisition from the department head, then the purchasing department will solicit, it's a requirement, at least verbal quotations, competitive quotations. How is that documented verbally? It's documented in writing by the requisitioner and or the purchasing department. The purchasing department approves it. Uh, the requirement right out of the, uh, the policy manual says purchases of commodities and services in this expenditure range must be made by the requesting department by submitting a properly completed requisition to general services purchasing department. The requisition must include sufficient description of the items to enable solicitation of competitive prices or quotes. If documented quotations have not been submitted by the requesting department, along with the requisition, the general services slash purchasing department will solicit them. Verbal or written prices and or quotations will be obtained. Then it goes on to say for $5,001 up through $25,000, in this case, purchases of commodities and services must be made by submitting a properly completed requisition to the purchasing department. The requisition must, must include a sufficient description of the item to enable solicitation of competitive quotes. Written quotations will be obtained for all purchases in this category. And that's from 5000 to 25000 Written quotations is one level of control. The bid process requires public announcement of the bid, uh, written uh, specifications and documentation, um, as, you, as, as we saw in, in the projects that we put out in, in, in notice in the newspaper. So the, the bid process, the formal bid process is beyond the requirement of, re of obtaining competitive pricing. But in all cases at the, at the county, other than purchases that can be made by credit card, which is zero to seven hundred forty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. That those purchases can be made from a supplier who has already demonstrated that he's got competitive pricing and/or he has an item in stock which is needed. And that's right out of the, the county's. Yeah, Tom, are you, are you saying this is a, this is a hole in our purchasing policy? I don't find it noted anywhere any of these kinds of requirements for areas under $25,000 now. It was 10000 but I don't see that there's a requirement that we get documented verbal and or written quotations for items between $750 and whatever the threshold is for, for formal bid process, bid, bidding. Uh, Tanya, don't we have those... We have those. They're, they're, Page three. The, the verbiage is okay. different, but can you run through that and for for Tom's satisfaction to see? If We're not using a seven hundred and fifty dollar threshold. That's uh, it's a little different. But what's purchase? Is, you said, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You said the seven hundred fifty is a, different. You said the county uses a seven hundred and fifty dollar threshold. We we're not using that that dollar amount. But for any purchases under five thousand dollars. Uh, it says no documented quotes are required at this level. However, the employee shall obtain product or service at the lowest possible price that meets the desired criteria. So, so we we still, even though it's documented quotes are not required, we're doing okay. we're doing anything. So there's under a requirement 5, that that be in the record for that particular purchase that that those numbers were obtained. For instance, well, tree trimming. No For instance, tree trimming. documented quotes are required, but we all have to do our due diligence on the okay. pricing. So, okay, so in so the future, any tree trimming that takes place for $4,000 to take down some trees, there will be some noted competitive prices in the record for that purchase order. Is that correct? It doesn't say that doc quotes have to be documented. 
There'll be so no the, record of what other pricing was received? We, we don't have a policy for that, but I think that each person that's making that purchase or department head needs to, to use their due diligence and, and find the right pricing or find the right vendor for that particular project. Well, there's a purchase order required, isn't there? Purchase order is required. So, in a, on the purchase order, right? There is a description on the purchase order. Yes. So the requisitioner will be free to place an order, and by him saying that it is competitive, that's enough for our policy. That satisfies our policy. No, our policy says that the employee shall obtain the product or service at the lowest possible price. Okay, so if you, uh, the per person making the purchase needs to obtain the best pricing okay. for that particular service. Okay. okay. Yeah. And There's that will be a matter of record. That'll be recorded somewhere, that information. Not necessarily. It oh. says it's not documented. That's the way the county is. The county says verbal quotes will be made from $750 to 5000 Verbal. That's verbal quoted pricing. Yes, and if they're, if they're not shown in the requisition, then the purchasing department will obtain those prices. That's what it, the county says. And that's what our policy says as okay, well. Okay, our, our, so our purchasing department will do that if it's not documented. Either the purchasing department or the department okay. head. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Anybody else? Public. Back to the board. Board comment. Okay, Allison. Supervisor Halbig. Yes. Supervisor White. Yes. Supervisor Hulbert. Yes. Supervisor Miller. Yes. Next item is resolution number 2016-01-0802, a resolution of the Southern Lake of Sebring Improvement District to approve an interlocal agreement with the county with the Board of County Commissioners, Highlands County, for improvements to basketball courts located within the boundaries of Sun and Lake Sebring Improvement District. Motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Um, just one question. By signing this, does that mean we, uh, we allow public access to those courts? We do, yes, sir. So we have no, it's not residents now, it's it's everybody that wants to come and play, is that it's right? It's public, yes sir, and it has been a public accessible courts as far as I, they've been constructed. Whether so. we like it or not. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any comments from the board? Public comment? Bring it back to the board. Allison? Supervisor White? Yes. Supervisor Hulbert? Yes. Supervisor Halbig? Yes. Supervisor Miller? Yes. Next item is Resolution 010803 of 2016, which is a resolution of the Southern Lake of Sebring Improvement District to approve Budget Amendment Number 4 to the 2016 budget to replace damaged roof trusses at the clubhouse. I need a motion, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Tanya, do you want to uh, lead off, or is Mike going to? I can, I can give a, a statement, and then Mike can answer any questions. But I've attached for your consideration is a budget amendment to the general fund in the amount of $9,750 to replace the trusses at the clubhouse. We do have repairs and maintenance budget that can handle our day-to-day our -day repairs, but this type of repair along with other repairs that we've seen in our facilities, uh, we would run out of budget by March. So we, I felt it was important to bring it to the board today and show you um, what, pic I have pictures in here as well of the trusses and, and, the, and oh, the water damage, yes. So um, we felt it was important for the repair to take place now versus going through another rainy season in the summertime. This this is kind of a scary situation because um, Super Supervisor Halbeck will remember this better than anybody else. But we at that time had a general manager that was bound and determined to be a hero and bring everything under budget, no matter what it was. And I remember immediately after we dedicated the clubhouse, we had acoustic problems, major acoustic problems, and we had window problems. 
Now, you're saying that these tresses, uh, what is this, six-year-old facility? Six-year-old facility, yes. Yeah, and they're untreated, right? Um, Mike, don't don't you think that we need to have a full uh, inspection by a qualified uh, guy to see what else we may have up there? Um, well, right now we're in the process of. Here's the problem with the clubhouse. There was a lot of stuff that was done that was done incorrect. Right. Mike, yeah. what we want to do is we want to fix what's wrong right now. Um, I'm fact, I talked to Tan yesterday, and we do want to hire somebody to come in and and um, go through the whole, actually the whole Sun Lake, and see the areas where we have to address that haven't been addressed. Starting with the clubhouse, Starting right? With the clubhouse. Do we uh, have other issues in other facilities. Um. E yes. Uh, we have the uh, well. Um, uh, what I like to do is go through the through all the buildings. Um, for instance, the oh, kitchen, we, we, the, we, we, the kitchen in the clubhouse. There was no there was no waterproof drywall used in the kitchen. So anything that gets wet, it turns moldy. Moldy. We've been fixing uh, a lot of small things. We've painted a, a lot of the areas. Uh, we've been fixing, but I think we do have to bring someone in, and um, uh, I don't know if I don't know if that would be Gator or who, whatever. Uh, I mean, a specialist in that because if we've got these trusses that are untreated. What's to say that the whole the whole building is trusses well, are I mean, untreated? I wasn't here, and Tanya wasn't here. Well, we're, we're not saying you were, but yeah. we've got to address this. Um, there are, um, for instance, some of the electrical, some of the. Um, uh, there were there were yeah. plugs and things like that w that should have should have been brought up to code. They weren't. Um, I never thought about having this whole thing completely inspected. I think it might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. This thing's only six years old. Mm -hmm. When that was being built, nobody nobody was allowed to go. It was all blocked off. No, nobody on the board was even. We we were denied access to that facility. And some of this might have been caught, but but and we've had a lot of problems. Lot, we paid a lot of money for an architect. Paid a lot of money for construction management group. Uh, Lodge, I think Lodge Construction was the construction manager. Mm -hmm. Do we have any recourse? Six years old. This place is starting to crumble and fall apart. Do we have any recourse with the construction manager? We've got we had we had contracts with these guys, and uh, I don't I don't know where we're at on that regard. I don't know if anybody's ever even looked at that. Yeah, I can uh, I can go back and obviously I wasn't present when that was going on, but uh, I can go back and review that contract. And generally, uh, when it comes to construction defects, you've got I th if I recall correctly, it's five years from the date that you right. know or should have known that the problem existed, but no more than 10 years total. So if we are stating now that this is the first time we've become aware of this problem, we need to, because a, a total, if it's, if it's more than 10 years, we can't do anything about it. I had a lot of documentation. As a matter of fact, I was the only one I think I had a set of full set of drawings on this thing, and I passed them along, but... Uh, well, we surely have some recourse against Lodge Construction Company on this daggone thing. I and, and the roof. I know that there's a picture of the roof leak. I don't know if that's coming from the truss. I don't think it could be coming from the truss. It must be coming from the roof. I know we got more. I know we got more than a five or six year uh, uh, warranty on the roof. I think that's a twenty five or thirty year thirty year roof. So a lot of these things that we're paying going to pay for. I think. Uh, I mean. If it's a dangerous situation, I think it needs to be done. But I think someone needs to get with Lodge Construction and say, hey, look, we got a real problem here, and it's going to cost us a lot of money, and it might be, it might be more... It might be a lot bigger than what these trusses are. If, right. If there's a, the there's a good chance they use just what? that kind of lumber on the trusses on the front, there's a good chance it's probably throughout the whole building. And uh, while the while the trusses trusses that you're looking at there are all all um, they're all to the weather. 
They're all Everything. exposed to your right. They're all exposed right now. Uh, that's a problem. They also should have probably been painted a couple of years ago, and they weren't. So they weren't, you know, they weren't really maintained. Um, but Mike, what, what, what David is saying is that we need to, to do two things first. Number one is the inspection, mm -hmm. so we know what we've got. Mm -hmm. And but number we've done that on the trusses. Well, that's got to get fixed right away. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, the, the uh, trusses right now are falling apart. Now, should should we come back and do the whole building, uh, start from the air conditioning to the electrical? Uh, yes, yes, we should, but it's going to cost us money. So, well, well the, the other thing, the other thing he said, and I, I, I fully agree with, is mm -hmm. we need to examine what uh, what our legal options are on this, what any warranties may be in place, and so forth, and that has to be done right. before we start repairing, because it may not be our nickel. I don't know, you know, what happened six years ago, uh, uh, what the agreements were, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, do we need to first search and see if we got the documentation, and, and I'm sure they're saying it was bonded pretty pretty well. I, I, in six years, I mean, the paint, matter of fact, the paint that they put on there was some sort of new paint that was supposed to last for, hmm, you know, 50 years or something. It was a brand new uh, Sherwin Williams. I think uh, there was a big there was a big discussion about that and how how this was supposed to last uh, forever, pretty much on the on the whole exterior of this building and and uh, so. Well, yeah. the problem was with that is they used the wrong materials. They basically used the regular pine, uh, and it's got to get fixed. Dave, how long would it take to uh, check out to see? Uh, if we've got any recourse at all. What I think Mike is saying, and I, I've looked at it, I have to agree with him, that this is on the overhang on the front of that building. And if this don't get fixed pretty dang quick, the whole roof up out there is going to start sagging. And then you're going to be talking some big, big dollars. Because uh, they are absolutely rotten clear out. Yeah, I agree that needs to be fixed, but okay. but at least we can we can document what it cost. Right. Okay. And, and we've got pictures to show what the problems were. Correct. And, and we now have go that. and then go after get this inspection or go after mm -hmm. Lodge Construction, mm -hmm. not go after them. Let's find out where we're at. Mm -hmm. Where we're at. Six would, years. Six years is not a very long time. I would save all that and lay all that out too, Mike. Don't yeah. don't let it get in the trash and get gone. Well, the well the new trusses that that we want to put up. First of all, they'll make them. They'll bring them to say we're gonna. Uh, 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 they'll be painted before they go up. They'll also be painted after they go up. The problem was is I don't think they were actually protected enough. So I mean, plus they use the wrong material. I mean, they're using. And they'll be treated, right? Right. Yeah, huh. it's not treated. There was none of. <laughs> None of that wood is treated up there. How much higher was the aluminum trusses that we talked about? I know they were higher. Uh, about fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars difference. Uh, but it's also going to change the way the clubhouse looks. So that's why that's why um, I asked for bids to go go with what we already had, but to go with the treated wood, to go with the. Um, uh, different type of paint. I, I mean, I didn't know anything about what David just said about their special paint. I first I heard that David. So, well, but we got to get it fixed. And there are other things that that we have to address in the maintenance of the buildings, and and we're starting to do that now. So, okay. we've already replaced. Did uh, I understand it right? We've already replaced a, an air conditioner or two in the building. Yeah, uh, two, two. Do they guarantee for more than five, six years? The ones, the, uh, the ones that we're replacing now, or the ones that were there. The ones that were there, Larry. Nobody knows a real lot about what went on there. It's just like David said. I guess they weren't allowed it in. We can't find any warranties. We can't find a lot of the, the document that was there. So that's you know. Well, can we? Think what we're starting is fresh. What we're trying to do is anything that we put in now. We take the warranties, we file it, we know when it was put in, we know who put it in, and we know what it was cost. And that's where we are now. Mike, I understand that, but 
I, I, I'm, I'm not sure you, you have the same sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. We need to have that inspection done as I quickly agree. as possible. I agree. And okay. we need to have, David, we need to have that, that reviewed. There are companies that will actually come in and, come in and go through the whole building uh, item by item and tell us how long they're going to last. Do we need that? I think we should do that, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I would recommend that because if, if this is just the tip, potentially the tip of the iceberg, this is a triggering event where we're put on notice now that there may be potential issues with the way the building was constructed, which means that the statute of limitations clock is ticking. Mm-hmm. Allison, you, you, you will appreciate this. Your predecessor at the time, the board secretary under this general manager, was made the project director for the clubhouse. I rest my case. Wow. Okay. Uh, any more board comment? Thanks, Mike. Uh, public comment. Bring it back to the board. So I guess what we're going to... What? Dick Diod, and I'm a resident. It seems to me the first thing you have to do is get a hold of Lodge Construction and at least give them the opportunity to to repair the stuff. If you don't advise them and you start messing around with it, they're going to come back and say, oh, we could have done this, we could have done that, we could have... So if you're going to go after Lodge, you got to get them in here first, in my opinion. Well, it's only one way phone call away from that. I mean, yeah, well, that's a good point. I don't even know if they're we still in business. Make the phone call this afternoon. Yeah, that's a good point, Dick. Good thought. Okay, any more from the public? All right, we're back to the board again. So if we approve this, it will be just sitting on hold, provi- waiting for to get a hold of the company or waiting to, to hear something, and then it could be done? Well, uh, I don't think we want Mr. Diaz's comment is, I, I think, very pertinent, so we have that to do. We have the inspection to arrange, and our attorney has... Uh, has a mission to see what all of our legal options and warranties and so forth are. Um, I don't know, Gator. Can you so, help us with this? So, uh, have you been at all involved? Is that why you're sitting in the fifth row and not up here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you you weren't involved. Uh, Paulson, didn't they do the site engineering? Okay, thank you. Um, so approval with this would be subject to well, checking it out. To all this, all, all you know, this does is approve the money to pr- perform the repairs, but doesn't actually. Okay. It just approves the budget amendment to, to okay. further make the money available. Okay, that's what I want to know. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that we ought to put this on hold until we get a hold of. Um, <coughs> Construction company, and uh, we're going to do that. From the attorney, what, where we stand, mm-hmm. and then go ahead with it. Bring it back at the next meeting. What uh, David said, it just what we're doing here is approving the money for it, and then we're not going to do it. We're not going to until we get get in touch with them. Then we're see where we're at. Is that what you're saying, large, David? Large construction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, right. we, we just had a major contractor walk into the room. Welcome, Ron. Ron is our county commissioner that uh, we is on with Sun and Lake. Uh, this was a very pertinent discussion. I wish you'd been here for that. We have problems already with the new clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're taking several steps, and um, we'll deal with it, but it's not pleasant. Okay, Allison? So we're just going to put this on. Well, we're we're going to approve the money, but we're not going to do anything until we, we find have, out about Lodge and the contract and where we stand. We have, when yeah. we vote, we approve the money. That's right. Okay. Or disapprove the money. Supervisor Halbert? Yes. Supervisor Halbert? Yes. Supervisor White? Yes. Supervisor Miller? Yes. Okay. Um... Next item is T 
2016-01804, Resolution of the Southern Lake of Sebring Improvement District to approve the recommendations of the Assessment Appeal Committee. Um, I need a motion for that, please. I'll make that motion. Second. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, board discussion. Can we have a summary of, of what, what transpired with the Assessment Appeal Committee? Um, we have a member here and um, uh, Mr. Gilpin, and who was our third member? You uh, were, right? I sat in on the December 29th meeting, and Jenny Cox was part of the December 2nd meeting. All right, so you fill in for there. I don't yes. care who, whoever wants to make a... Mike, you want to make a... Mike, <laughs> you go sooner or later. You're going to have to get up here. So, I've got I've got a couple questions okay. on this. Well, I'm it, it, okay. Um, there's a, there's a good description of the of the appeal that was honored. There's a good description of the appeal that was honored. I was just curious as to what the other the ones that were turned down. What was their normal appeal request just I don't want to pay this much or was I, there, I don't want to pay this a, much the there assessment error, I mean, is too high and what is my benefit I can't okay. see my benefit okay so that those were the, the main uh, reasons that was my assumption of what it might have been but I I didn't but this uh, this seems to be reasonable in this case but that's all I've got Okay, and we probably yeah we we got a partial picture of uh, we got the approval we didn't get the um, uh, the uh, turn down so maybe next time we can have more full report on that right well basically there the committee received thirteen appeals and of of the thirteen they're recommending uh, one appeal uh, an exemption for three point one acres of the ten acre track. The 3.1 acres is a, a formal wetland, and it, it, the owner was granted an exemption until 2019 for, for the permit as a wetland. Uh, the committee, excuse me, okay. the, the committee uh, is, is recommending to grant the exemption for this piece of property, and the owner has to appeal each year until the, her permit expires in 2019. That's fine. Any more board comment? Public comment. Last chance, Mike. Bring it back to the board. Allison? Supervisor Halbig? Yes. Supervisor White? Yes. Supervisor Hulbert? Yes. Supervisor Miller? Yes. Okay, the last resolution we have is 01. 058. 058. <laughs> you mean 08, right? Actually. Is that a typo? That's a typo. <laughs> okay. 010805. Resolution of the Southern Lake of Sebring Improvement District to approve the execution of a deed of conservation easement to the Southwest Florida Water Management District. Need a. Um, Proposal on that. I will so move. Second. Okay. Board comment. This is you. Yeah. Do you want me to explain a little bit about? Yeah. It? Why don't you? Yeah. Okay. So es essentially, this is this is part of the steps that are being undertaken in order for the with the final result being the uh, fire station slash uh, EMS station that's going to eventually you know hopefully be built on Sun Lake Boulevard on property that's owned by the hospital. Uh, the hospital is wanting to change some of their uh, conservation land in order to make use, it's my understanding, for a, a parking lot or additional parking. And in order to get that compensation, they need something to mitigate. And where the district is willing to give this property up in the northeast corner uh, as mitigation. Um, the only real hiccup that I see, and that's the, the reason that we're recommending it be done the way it is, and that is what we're going to do is execute, or if the board approves it, execute this deed, but hold it 
because as it stands now, everything has just been kind of handled verbally. You know, we've got, there's been verbal discussions with the county, verbal discussions with Florida Hospital, you know, verbal discussions with Swift Mud, FDEP. There's lots of you know pieces still in play. So we we don't want to give this property dedicated as a conservation easement and then have something in the future fall apart and then we you know we've dedicated this land and we've got nothing in return so essentially what we're doing here is we're recommending that the board execute this deed and hold it until the next the other steps start to fall into place and then when everybody's ready we execute one large agreement that says here's everything that's going to happen we turn over our deed florida hospital turns over its deed fdp swift mud all sign off on everything and the project gets so this is one step that we need to take yes uh, commissioner hanley any any thoughts on this or we no. Any any day. Okay, no no problems. No problems with respect to the new CEO coming in. Okay, he's supposed to be here on the seventh, but uh, I was over there yesterday, and they said he hadn't arrived yet. Okay, um, David. Sometimes the simplest things get awfully complicated. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. Start talking about this. A long time ago. Three years. Three years. Okay, any public comment on this? Okay. Must be the rainy day. You guys are remarkably <laughs> quiet. quiet. Um, back to the board. Comments? Allison? Supervisor White? Yes. Supervisor Hulbert? Yes. Supervisor Halbig? Yes. Supervisor Miller? Yeah. Okay, last item is a mutual general release for Kurt McCullough. We have a discussion on that, and David, I think you're going to take the lead. Oh, yeah, I can. Um, essentially, it's basically the same type of uh, general release that was executed uh, when Mr. Wright's contract was uh, bought out early. Um, I did have a conversation with Mr. McCullough after his resignation letter came in, and he said that he had not requested it and would not execute it. Um, I don't know if we want to move forward on a discussion or... Well, if you don't want to execute it, then forget it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was I was going to welcome the discussion because I think uh, I think at some point we need to have a discussion on how how this board of supervisors is somehow disconnected from the from Sunny Lake District, the way they're looked at regarding things like this. Especially in indemnification for lawsuits, complaints, things like that, it really ought to. It ought, ought to really, in my opinion, it ought to happen automatically without having to come to the board with your hat in your hand, pleading for help <laughs> when these predators come after you. You know, and you know, it's it's. Uh, John Clark said years ago, you know, some of you remember John Clark, some of you don't, but he was a former longtime board member and a resident. He told me there was n not a more prestigious or more powerful position in Sun Lake than being a member of the Board of Supervisors. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> You're not right. <laughs> you know, th this board in the last few years has only been tolerated. I mean, the the administration has been tolerate. We've, they've been tolerant of us. They just assume we go away. Hopefully, that's that's changing, and I think it is. 
but you know, serving on this board's hard enough under the best of circumstances. Uh, hard enough to get people without without the additional stresses caused by investigations provoked by complaints of disgruntled employees. Somehow, somehow, we need to get some real strong something in place to protect this board is just the same way as the employees are protected. I think right now it's a little bit different. Uh, and that's that's the reason that I that's the reason that I wanted something like this because you know that we're not old, we're not through this mess yet mm -hmm. probably. Hopefully we are. I mean there's several of us still in a in a dog fight, but it's ridiculous to to have to put up with this, and there's no, there's no, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, but there's just no end to it, uh, because we're an easy target. We're an easy target for anybody, and if we let this thing continue to be, us to be an easy target, it's going to continue to go on and on, and somehow we need to get to... Uh, Maybe we just had a succession of bad draws, and maybe it's a society we live in. But uh, when you start being being targeted all the time uh, for trying to do your job to the best of your ability and uh, for filling your your you know your your rep your your uh, responsibilities, it's it's just too bad. So anyway, at least I had my. Uh, my my say on that. So, uh, Mr. McCauley doesn't want it, want it, then just pull it off the table. I'd still like to get any board thoughts on this, and uh, also David, your thoughts. Is there some path that we should be considering? Well, like I say we with all the stuff that's happened recently and the the, the resolutions that we had to undergo regarding the the, the uh, repayment of legal fees. Um, all that was based on a resolution that was drafted back and, and, and adopted back in 2009, but and no actual policy has been placed in the policy manual. Although it, you know, that resolution, that 09-10 resolution, describes the policy, you know, describes the policy, but it's not anything that was actually specifically put into the policy manual. I think probably the best thing to do is to revisit that, revisit 09-67, which complements that uh, the 09-10 resolution, and put together an actual policy and say this is the policy we're going to adopt. It and put it in the manual rather than anytime something you know pops up that requires you know third party legal representation we have to go back and dig through these well that's right we haven't worked on the policy manual yet mm -hmm. can you can you start on something of that nature absolutely and give mm -hmm. us an idea of how it would be quoted mm -hmm. okay uh, let me uh, add to what David said two years ago I had more people come up and, and tell me what a what a great job the board was doing, and they were proud of us, and they were uh, pleased with the direction of the Sun Lake. This last year, I've had a lot of the same people, some of whom are in this room, come up and say, you know, I wouldn't touch your job with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> and and you can tell because we've had the third year in a row in the landowner election that's uncontested. And it, it's a sorry day when we don't have uh, an active and a vital democracy in this community. I remember, and Dave remembers this too, years ago we had some real, real good debates and dog fights about the direction that this district was taken. Larry Patetto remembers this, Dick Deal remembers this, and certainly Mr. Bond re remembers this. And those days seem to be gone, so I I'm, I'm sorry, and uh, we come to where we are, but that's that's it. And David, I, I support Mr. Halvick's uh, request to you for some kind of do we have any do we have any public comment on this <coughs> that's what I mean okay back to the board we have no we have no vote okay. it just we're done right, right. Do, you, do you want yep the only thing I was going to mention is before our county supervisor gets away uh, I think they did something with uh, the pickup of the uh, recycling I th thought I saw something in well, the they got ticked that. off at their attorney and decided to take <laughs> it in their own hands. Can you update us on that? Uh, what happened if 
Bringing that um, expertise in house doesn't seem to have been very good. As a case, it's, 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 a, it's a case study for us anyway. I, I was up there the other day dumping my stuff, and there was a county employee cleaning up the mess. It was a mess. I mean, I guess everything was full, and they people were just throwing stuff everywhere. And there was a county employee up there cleaning it up, breaking everything down. And I really appreciate that. Uh, we're, we're getting there. It's kind of like the We're going to get there. Promise. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we have any add-on items. We do have a petition, uh, communications from uh, MS Pat Martin, and uh, let me read that. Is she? Are you here? This is you. Okay. Uh, my husband and I have recently become full-time residents of the Sun and Lake community. I would like to begin an aerobic walking group using the Leslie Sansom Walk at Home program in a Sun and Lake community center. And you own a lot of the DVDs and can get organized. Um, I, I see no problem with that, Tanya. I would only only say that we would if she's going to be using this equipment we would need some kind of a grip uh, agreement that if anything goes awry during that usage then you know that would have to be uh, compensated we can do that i just want to be sure that the times that she has indicated are open times for the community center hmm. yes they are okay i've got a, i've got a question is this a for pro- for profit uh, oh, okay okay then I'm then I'm completely for it. <laughs> yeah. um, well, with that caveat, any uh, any further comments? No. Okay. All right. I guess you got it. Staff reports start out with uh, Tanya. Uh, the only one today will be Jim Kurtzborn. The only one. Jim Kurtzborn, Sun and Lake Golf Club General Manager, Billy Casper Golf. Uh, hope everybody's having a nice, uh, quiet, rainy day. Uh, we had a, a good November. Uh, I'll get with you, President Miller, and uh, we can look at the financial review you're looking for. Maybe we were anticipating a, a greater requirement than you need. Uh, November was a nice month. Uh, we came in $19,000 better than budget. Uh, that was really kind of attributed across the, the board. Uh, golf operations were $3,000 better than budget. Food and beverage was $4,000 better than budget. Uh, we uh, saved some money on benefits to the tune of $6,000 and saved some money on golf course uh, maintenance to the tune of $5,000 is, is how we came up to that $19,000 number with a little bit of rounding um, in a general sense. Uh, Course conditions continue to improve. The the warm weather is a benefit. Uh, The wetness and lack of sunshine isn't, but we're still making progress. 
Uh, we planted the flower bed in front of the snack bar yesterday, which turned out nice. Um, and we're in the process of uh, then moving to number 14 on turtle. So uh, we'll keep knocking out that detailing initiative and the beautification initiative that we have. Um, we've added some flowers around the clubhouse that have turned out nicely. Uh, relative to our F&B operation, our uh, F&B service director started her first week, uh, Sherry Sensuay. Um, it's been a very successful week. Um, to this point, the expertise that she's gained by managing the Olive Garden for six years and being an assistant manager in the 90s uh, at Pinecrest seems to be very beneficial. Um, and it'll be just part of our you know, focus to Im improve the experience for the members uh, and the guests at the club. Uh, I've talked to Kevin. We're in the process of working on a new menu to try to keep things fresh. Uh, we're working, going to be working with the group leaders and the new members having a, a meeting in the next couple weeks. We want to get feedback from the group leaders when they go out on the golf course so we can anticipate how many of them are going to be coming into the restaurant. Um, increased business is great. We had a great, great night last night, but the clubhouse was totally full, so accommodating the members and a private party and making everybody happy is, is why you've hired me. Um, but it is, it is a nice challenge to have. Uh, how are our events doing, uh, you know, the special events and so forth? Because we had a great year last year. Are, yes. we, are we doing as well or better? Uh, we're running on par with last year, actually. Uh, we were running, a, running ahead through November. Uh, we've had a, a soft December for golf and the special events. Uh, I know on the on the Gulf side, that's kind of statewide uh, with the temperatures being so warm up north. I guess the hypothetical thought is that a lot of the residents that come down for a month and go back and forth just stayed up there based on, on the nice weather they were having. Um, one or two events can, you know, affect your numbers. Uh, we didn't uh, didn't have a good New Year's party. Uh, so we're going to go back to the drawing board with that. Uh, one thing in the whole scope of that is we'll be getting out in the next six months a couple surveys. Um, I want to get feedback from the membership of what they're looking for and what they'll support in a number of areas. Uh, and I like surveys. I, I like them because they help me measure, you know, what we're doing. And then also it gets you a lot of, you know, ideas where you can try to get a general feeling of the membership. Uh, beyond that, we've got the Latino American qualifier coming next week. Uh, they are on Deer Run from Monday through Friday. Uh, this year, I think it's actually a, a number of benefits have happened with the event. Um, one, uh, they've moved forward a week, which makes it a less you know less busy week for us membership wise, um, and that's actually a financial benefit based on the numbers we've seen in the past and less of an imposition for the members. How, how are we doing with volunteers for that? Uh, my understanding is we have enough. Uh, Michelle Murray's handling that. Um, and we always have a great turnout from what I understand. The feedback from the tour is, uh, you know, we're probably the most welcoming place that they come. They're very happy to see the way that, the way that they're handled and appreciated here. I've got a question. Uh, did we did we sign? I can't remember. I know there was. Is this a multi-year? Yes, sir. This is a two-year year agreement. This is the first year first of a two-year two year agreement. agreement. Okay. Um, where we moved forward a week this year, and also, you know, next year just from the calendar, we actually move up a couple days, um, which which is a benefit. I mean, this is uh, traditionally the iffiest part of the year is the last two weeks of December and you know the first few weeks of January. Those can be your coldest days, so it's uh, kind of a benefit to us having them here. We know that it's a, a stable income, it's a good representation for the club. Uh, we did put an extra effort to pay attention to what was happening on Turtle. Uh, all of our tea times for next week to this point are our members and their guests. Uh, we still have tea times every day. 
Um, at this point, all the morning tea times we have, um, we're just going to hold for members, which we have three or four foursomes each day available with the exception of Tuesday. Uh, we don't have any availability in the morning, but we actually have 24 foursomes open in the afternoon. Um, so that's, that's something that's important to me that we, you know, take care of the members when they're displaced. So there still is the ability to play every day. It, you know, it's not exactly at the time that you want it to be since we do an 8 o'clock and 1 o'clock shotgun to, you know, service the groups. So if we're looking at this thing going forward, when would you come back to the board to have the discussion? I mean, I'm sure these guys want to know where they're going to go. Would it be next year this time? Yes, it would be It would be next year at this time. I mean, a lot of it, um, I mean, it's driven by us and by the PGA Tour. Uh, I haven't met Sebastian Menendez personally. I've talked to him a number of times on the phone. Um, but they usually have different plans and goals, and I'm not not sure the the changes they made this year was they added an extra qualifier and then they decreased our number of participants from 135 to 84. Um, now our financial uh, situation with them they paid the same amount for the golf course um, there's been a, a change in the way the food and beverage is handled where we've you know had a had a give and take because um, they obviously don't have as many players as they had had before. Um, so we gave them some food and beverage for their staff, did a golf outing to try to, you know, balance the revenues to make sure that uh, we did well. So um, I project we're going to do three to $5,000 better bottom line, you know, this year than we did last year. Uh, Does this pro-am money, is that going back to the tour or is that staying here? The, the pro-am money we actually give, you know, it's, it's a primarily member pro-am. Uh, so with the exception of a small green fee for the guests that come in, um, the rest is all for the, you know, goes to the charity. Uh, the tour doesn't, really the tour doesn't participate in the pro-am at all other than they allow us to contact the players or they, um, you know, help us to contact the players. Um, it, it's all kind of a big team. Most of the players that are playing are staying in a personal residence, so that way they don't have to incur another night of hotel of hotel costs because the, uh, you know, remuneration to them in a monetary sense is not large, um, but I'm sure they appreciate you know, the welcoming of having all the housing available. So, um, and I'm sure that reputation of us, you know, being good hosts is known to the players, you know, from year to year. Uh, they place primarily in the same events and see the same people. So um, they know that we take good care of them and that we're very friendly. Uh, beyond that, I just... Uh, I'm having good luck with our GPS advertising. I'm 70 75% of the way to our goal to, you know, get that. And we're going to try to surpass, you know, the, the $20,000 number we have budgeted. Um, but so far we're at 15000 Do we have any Rangers on the course? Rangers on the golf course, we have starter Rangers that... You know that work for both. I'm not talking about starters. I'm talking about. Uh, I don't think specifically there's there's rangers that are budgeted to be out there um, all the time. Um, my observation is that's something we should probably look at this. You know this May. Well, the uh, GPS before you got here there was a big argument with GPS, and they said, "Well, you have the uh, GPS, and you don't need rangers because uh, it's all controlled by the clubhouse." But more rounds than, than outsider rounds are done by members, and they don't have any of their own GPS. So I just wondered if we're getting into any, any uh, I don't say control, but any um, administrative problems out in the course. I got I got a question too about GPS. I don't know if you're going to answer him first. Or yes. Um, well, to be honest, my experience is limited right now with what's happening with pace of play on the golf course. That's you know every club you go to, pace of play is a problem, no matter how fast or how slow it is. Um, I try to 
look at myself as an updated person technologically, but old school with the way that I feel. Um, I don't know how you replace personal interaction when you're dealing with members. Um, so whenever anybody's waiting, if you have the availability for somebody to go out there and, you know, verbalize to the front groups of a group, you know, why they're waiting and, and come up with the reasons that usually works a lot better than, you know, assuming people will understand it. Uh, but, but we'll work at it more. It is nice to have, you know, the GPS, but really one of the things you're always going to find, in my opinion here from what I've seen, is uh, members are always going to play much faster than the outside. They, they know the golf course. They're, you know, consistent golfers, and you have to plan for that if you're going to try to keep you know, keep everybody happy. So um, I'll get get back to you with some more information on that as to what we're doing and make that more of a focus because I know speed of play is one of the top three or four things that affects people's enjoyment of the game. Jim, could could you make sure these guys program these GPSs? You know, when we when we we all agreed to do the GPS, and the most of us sitting here agreed to do it reluctantly because it was a management tool to keep to keep these carts off the greens and in areas where they're not supposed to go. And more and more, you see them with almost two wheels on the greens. There's no handicap flags. I mentioned it to Andy the other day, and he said, well, some of the guys that are, we're not putting, we're not giving out the handicap flags necessarily if somebody is a handicap. I said, well, you can tell by the, by the people that are playing, they're really not handicapped. They may be 25, 30 years old, and all four of them are, look like they're pretty agile. But the carts are where they're not supposed to be, and I don't know how they, why why they got them programmed. I mean, that was the main reason that we bought them is to keep to keep the and and I know you can't control the membership, but but boy, I tell you, you see these carts right up on the tee boxes, you see carts right up on the greens, and. You know, it's it just aggravating, and so uh, you might need you might need to, to to talk to them or see where see where they got the parameters set up and and maybe get it corrected and and put where they belong if uh, if that's unless there's a uh, unless there's a reason why. Uh, I know. I know the reason why they don't want them shutting, yeah. shutting down, and have to have to get out of the clubhouse and come out and and get somebody started. But uh, that's that's, you know. Uh, no, that shouldn't be a valid reason, and it's maybe a funny way to share my shorthand. But I have four stars around that, so we'll. <laughs> um, and I look at black carts differently than other carts. So member problems are different problems than the outside problems. So um, I can just tell from your comments that we need to refocus on that and get a better handle on on how the GPS system works. Good. We done, Jim? Yes, sir. I got one, okay. one more question for you. I know there was a big hole over on, I think it was 11 T box where a sprinkler head was way down. Did we get something around that so somebody don't step in that and break an ankle? Yes. I don't know. Maybe it's already been done. Is I don't that know. 11 turtle or deer? It's 11 deer, I think. Okay. Am I correct there? Uh, on the it's right on the tee or right off the tee. There's a sprinkler head that's way down. Wait, I mean, it's down like right. this far. No, we'll get that taken care of. And I would just basically end that we're, you know, focusing especially for the next three or four months on two newsletters a week. Um, and I'll stress to the membership to send me emails or drop me notes about anything on the golf course that needs. Okay. The needs other question I have is, uh, like over on number two of Turtle, I know the sidewalk is about four inches higher than the. This is up at the green where you make the loop. The sidewalk is, the uh, cart path is way higher than the the surrounding area. Yes. Uh, it may be advisable to either pull some sand in or bring some something else in to eliminate part of that. Great. We'll take a look at that. And that's probably two things off Mr. Norcross's list for Tuesday. That we <laughs> I got, it could be. <laughs> I got, I I got one more question. Yes, sir, and, and I've, I've, I've been asked this. Uh, they said, how many? what's our membership total? 
uh, and you may not know it offhand, but we used to get a, by this time we'd get a summary of, of regular members, uh, seasonal members to get the total. Do you know what the total membership I can number send is? you that. Uh, it's right around 350. The, the number's consistent. Um, we're a little bit behind on revenue, uh, which is a, a large basis of it is members getting discounts by getting by getting older, um, and we've actually had a decrease in family memberships and an increase in single memberships. Um, there hasn't been a big the five month membership to the analysis to this point hasn't had a big effect of people coming in and out of it in that way, um, but it's mostly the the two-person membership going to a one-person membership, and most of the analysis, which will be ongoing, especially for our pricing going forward next year in the budget, um, is it you know medical reasons and people, you know, their spouse not being able to play anymore. Yep. One more. Have you had anybody qualify for the free membership yet? No, sir. But uh, that's that's a top tops on our list to promote that, and you know. We want the realtors to really know so that we have people coming to Sun Lake first and and not making a buying decision and then figuring out they should have been here. Okay, thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we had modest gains in growth in 2014. We had uh, 12 new um, homes in I guess there are permits that were pill, uh, pulled. In 2015, we had 13, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. If you go back a couple, <coughs> a couple of years before that, you're talking about zero and one and two. So it's painful, but we're making some progress in growth. Okay, um, that's it for staff. Is that right? General counsel report. David? Sure. Um just for after the uh, Sunshine Law training session and workshop we had at the end of the last meeting, um, you had asked me to look up some of the, the training stuff for the supervisors when we had provided those. Uh, based on our on the on the records that I was able to review, we did a Mr. McClure did a review with Mr. Ganjimi on uh, January 29, 2010. Uh, Mr. McClure and I did a review with Mr. Holbert on January 2, 2013. Uh, Mr. McCullough's was with Mr. McClure on January 7th, 2013. And then Mr. McClure did Mr. White's in January, on January 24th, 2014. How long were those sessions? Probably no more than 30 minutes. About 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a book. So you did four? Uh, four, what well, I was able to four find records 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah, nothing for Mr. Miller, nothing for Mr. Halbert. We were able to find when we went back. Well, you know the story for me. Um, okay. What else, David? Um, the the full uh, litigation and uh, foreclosure report will be at the next meeting, but uh, Tane had asked me to bring you guys up to date on D uh, Doty and Ayala. Um, Mr. Hurley, I think, was deposed. Were you deposed on the 5th? Yeah, for the, D the Doty matter and Mr. Brunner as well. Uh, the district council has got de a deposition scheduled to depose the, the plaintiffs, the Dotys, on uh, J or January 12th. Uh, and there's going to be a hearing on the one of the, the, the defendants, I think the property owners or the landlords, the Webbers. Uh, they they filed a motion for summary uh, judgment, and that will be heard on the 1st. Uh, Gallagher Bassett, based on some of their reports, says that the district's got a high chance of success if it actually goes to a trial. Um, but discovery is still ongoing or not. There's no trial date set yet. So What, is, what are we into? Are we starting our fourth year on that? I mean that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a wrongful death suit, so they say they're grasping at anything they can get, you know, they can get their their hands on. So, um, Ayala, it's it's going to be interesting to see how that pa pans out. That's the, even uh, worse. Yeah. The the district's council filed, you know, in compliance with the court order that all com all discovery is supposed to be completed by the end of the year. The district's council filed multiple requests for documents. Those documents should be due and forthcoming by February 2nd. Um, however, the plaintiffs have filed a motion to extend the discovery period uh, to allow for some additional depositions that didn't get a chance to uh, get completed by the cutoff date. Um, I did have my first chance to meet with our new uh, circuit civil judge, Judge Radin, who is a Harvard Law graduate, believe it or not, and uh, he made it very clear to me that he likes to move cases. So I think that a lot of the delay stuff that had been going on previously is not going to hold much water with him. 
So hopefully we'll see some conclusion to some of these ongoing litigated matters. I don't think these plaintiffs in an Ayala case can afford uh, these attorney fees over like three years. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. There are there are a lot of them. So I mean it's <laughs> okay. Anything else, David? Oh yeah, one other thing: the the golf, the the free one year golf membership. We, I've been working on that form. We should have it ready by the next meeting. Okay, very good, Tanya. The district's new web- website will be revealed to us on January 13th with staff training during the last week of January. Uh, we are anticipated to go live with the new website in mid-February. So we'll all have a sneak peek uh, sometime mid-next week for that. Uh, I was accepted into the Certified District Manager Program in Tallahassee January 25th through the 29th. The program is sponsored by the Florida Association of Special Districts and Florida State University. Uh, After the one-week course, there will be a written assignment to be completed before the certification is issued. And the subjects covered under this course are procurement, public relations, strategic planning, budgeting, board relations, ethics, and sunshine law. So that will be a one-week course at the end of January. The district will be submitting requests for qualifications for professional engineering services related to utilities, including but not limited to consultation of the district's water distribution, plant electrical services, wastewater collection system, and other project specifications. So in... in re- Can I interrupt you? Yes. Um, that, that comes as a real surprise. I thought that uh, Polston handled... A lot of that. Holston is handling our, our water and wastewater distribution systems, but in a recent project, uh, Gator has requested a electrical engineer services and other consultation for um, problems that we're having in, with the blowers and the Unit 23 plant. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. That, so that, we, that comes out of our, um, our consultant line item, consultant yes. consultancy line yes. item. So we, we need a, a service related to electrical right now, and uh, so we're going to move forward with trying to find us a, a specialist in that area. The preliminary permit for the maintenance yard will be submitted to the county on Monday. After the preliminary permit is approved, the final permit will be submitted. Uh, once the final permit is approved, the district will advertise for the bid. So we're, we're still looking at several months out before that happens. You might share the um, case with the landscape architect in that regard. Well, I met with uh, Dale Polston and Gator Howerton this week, and uh, they do have another contact person that they're going to be uh, getting with here, and he is a landscape architect. So we certified, we, right? He's certified, and um, we'll see see how fast that we can get someone to actually look at our landscaping plans. Uh, for the permitting phase of this, uh, how far do you have to have? Where, what to what degree are the drawings have to be for the permitting? In the preliminary stage. We, we've, we're going to be submitting a preliminary uh, permit, and the degree of drawing is right now we don't have specifications for concrete, electrical. I'd like Gator to speak a little bit more about that, but um, but that that will be needed for the final. Okay, it'd be interesting to if if there's something available that you can be can be passed around. It'd be well, nice. Well, I to, to I was going to offer for the board members to actually uh, make appointment with myself and and Gator if yeah. you'd like to review some of these specifications. I, we have um, we have drawings, maps, any any kind of detail. So I'd like if you're interested, uh, feel free to to make an appointment with me and we can review those. Right. Yeah, right Gator. now we have the, the preliminary site plan ready to submit to the county. I want to you give your name for the record. Uh, Gator Howard, Center Clint Howard, Bolson Engineering. But, yeah, we have those ready to submit to the to the county for the preliminary site plan. We're just waiting on the application fee uh, check to be cut. So as soon as I can pick that up, we'll submit that in. Uh, it'll take a little while to get that back. Uh, and we're going to be working on other details on the site work, mostly on the building and just details on things like the fuel islands and the, and the recovery for the wash facility and things like that, make sure that I have all the details that we need for the for the bidding process. But uh, any time you want to look at them, I have the plans. I, need, I can print them at any time. 
what I have up to date. So you're welcome to come by our office or schedule a meeting with Tanya and I, and and uh, you're welcome anytime to see him. But we'll we'll bring you plans as they're. Prepared. Are we going to start this project before summer? It's going to be around that time probably. Uh, I don't have an exact time line on it some uh, for right now, but on the details. But we're trying to push this along with several other projects as well with the fire station and and we've had some hiccups and things at the, some existing facilities we had to work on as well so well, well i got you up here how about the uh, unit five drainage situation those, those letters go out tell you the letters for the unit five drainage did go out uh, we've met or talked to all seven so far a majority of the seven six people okay and we received uh, positive feedback on that project Okay. The other thing that uh, I know Gator is working on is the uh, Ponce de Leon sidewalk project. Where are we on that? We are w looking into cost estimates on, on different um, aspects of that project, and I'll be bringing it to the board in the near future, probably the next meeting. Does, does Tanya have a set of drawings over there, or can you provide her with one in case someone wants to stop by and just take a look at those? For the preliminary, for the site right. plan on that? Right. Uh, I don't know if she has a set there right now, but I can drop those off Monday morning. Okay. Okay. So. The district will be advertising for bid the restroom and storage facility at the tennis courts uh, the week of January 18th. So we're ready to, to move forward with the advertisement of that project as well. I do have all the site plans for that facility in my office. So if anybody's interested in stopping by and looking at it, I mean, it's the restrooms and the storage. For the bathroom, right? Okay. <laughs> The, uh, the district notified Tanglewood's general manager and the Dollar General store facilities manager in Tennessee regarding the concrete median to be installed in the, the first, it's the first driveway entrance there at, at Dollar General. Uh, I have not received any feedback as of the state, so uh, I'd like to follow up with Dollar General. They, they have acknowledged my receipt of my email uh, in December, so I uh, haven't heard anything since. Uh, we mentioned the sidewalks. We're going to be working on that in the next week or so. And uh, Dick, you mentioned the uh, the permits and our new construction here in the district. Uh, yesterday in Highlands Today, uh, our county property appraiser quoted stating the market has come back and we're seeing growth again. So there was an article about fiscally constrained county, or is the county fiscally constrained? Yeah, so that was an article. Okay. So. That's okay. all I have. Well, we have one other thing. You've received three proposals for a new labor uh, lawyer. I have, yes. And shouldn't those be distributed to the board? At the next meeting, through, yes. At the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I understand Mr. Co excuse me, I understand Mr. Koji is part of that? He one is. One of those? Yes, sir. Okay. You got enough to do? <laughs> That's an understatement. I had to say that. Yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, I love it. It's a good problem. Yeah. Job security. For any consultant, you're right. Uh, Tanya, anything else? No, sir. That's it. Okay. We have unfinished business? None. New business? No. No committee reports? None. Okay. We're on to public comments. Mark Camp, resident, uh, Pebble Beach Drive. I guess I have a couple questions. Can everybody hear him? No, no. Take the mic. Sorry about that. I have a couple questions, and maybe I can make this very short or it could be longer. Uh, and I'll ask David, because you have a legal counsel, you should be able to help me out. Hold the this. mic up here, Mom. I'll ask David. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to understand a little bit about what a resolution really means. For an example, when a resolution is passed, does that become a law unless amended by the board? You know, how do we 
governed by a resolution. Well, basically what it does is it's, it's documenting the vote that was taken and the, the facts and circumstances under which the vote was made. So basically, rather than just having, you know, obviously all of these, these there's minutes of the meeting. However, minutes of the meeting do not are not required by law to be verbatim. Um, they can be just you know, general, generalized as to what went on. We do resolutions in order to say that here's what the, you know, here are the items or the fact facts that the board based its vote on and that way the public those are all those are all become it makes it easy for someone to say oh yes you know that's I can see exactly what it was that that occurred that the board made its decision on as opposed to having to go back request copies of the minutes and try and figure out from the you know obviously not you know not verbatim minutes as to what happened so if I understand correctly, if there is, for an example, they had earlier today, they talked about budget process, or, or not the budget process, but the cap, mm-hmm. the 25000 or the 10000 Once that's voted on, you kind of adhere to that 10000 Is that correct or well, not? Well, correct. And then, like I say, that, with that specific resolution, the reason we're undertaking that is at a previous meeting, we had we adopted a new purchasing policy that had a bunch of details in it. However, one of those details was we were raising the the, the level from 10000 25000 as to what the what, what, what would require or trigger the competitive bidding process. And while that's wonderful for the district's you know, policy, the county ordinance directed 10,000. And so in order to change that 10,000, we have to petition the county commissioners to actually ad- ad- you know, revise the ordinance, which is county law. Okay. I greatly appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So let me ask it another way. If given dates, such and such starts on this date, ends on that date, do we have to adhere to that if it's in the resolution? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of like an example. But I mean, I'll give you an example. October 1st to December 1st, we put a window. We advertise that window, October 1st to December 1st. Do we have to adhere to that, or can we move that window? Oh, I mean, it, it can be moved, but that, if, that's the, if that's the action the board has taken, then that's, until it's changed, then that's the resolution. So the board has to come and say, we are going to amend this October 1st to December 1st Correct. date. Mm-hmm. Okay. That brings me up to my discussion then. Here's a concern, okay, and there's a perception out there that certain memberships, special deals being cut. Okay. Are you talking about golf now? Yes, I'm sorry. Golf memberships, thank you. One of the things is that we advertised three years in a row we had resolutions in 2013 for the 2013 214 season, 214 215 season, 215 216 season. The resolution was to run specific dates for memberships, the seasonal memberships specifically. Okay? Within that time frame, it said. From December 1st to April. Okay? It was also advertised in the uh, the uh, Tampa paper with the schedule and all of this information. There were people out there, and, and I think the five month memberships and the three month memberships are great for this club. I really do. I think they're a real benefit. However, when I was down here, I came for six years I've been coming down here. This is my first year full-time resident. I would have taken advantage if they would have allowed me to move my membership dates, because I was only down here for five months, if I could move it any way I wanted and customize it to my likings. But I was told, no, the date is December 1st to such and such. Well, in conversation with a number of players out there, that's not what they're adhering to. They're getting special, for lack of a better word, special deals. And I'd like to understand, if we have a resolution on the books, who has the authority to go and change that if the board didn't change it? Can management change it at the district? Can management change it at Casper? Who has that authority? Well, not really. I mean, the board has made a resolution. We adhere to the resolution. We amend the resolution, or we change it totally. But it's it's a board decision. Now, I think you're referring to the fact that we have some five month memberships, uh, December through April, and some others, um, November through March or January through. Well, that I'm not aware of. That I'm not aware of. And and Jim will have to speak to that. 
If that's the case, then we're getting outside the box that you just described, no question about it. And we need to make sure that we get back to the basics. So, Jim, you so, want to comment on so that? Before, before he comments on that, so if, if you're aware of it as part of the board... If I'm aware, aware of it? If you're aware that there are memberships running from November, let's say, I think you just said that, why... Why did we allow that to happen when it's supposed to start in December? That's a good question. But we got half of our five months, don't we? Uh, November through March, another half of. I'm, I'm talking about approximates, um, but technically, you're correct. Yeah, I mean, personally, I don't like. I say I don't care. They can run it from October, any five month period. Well, you, you bring up look, any Mark, three month period. You bring up a very good point, and I believe the supervisor Halbick has been concerned about that. Is that correct? Yeah, I've had some conversations uh, with uh, Well, with it's Jim good it's on the table. I'd like, I'd like to get Jim to respond to that if he would. Please. Before Jim does respond to it, I did go to him because I thought there were special circumstances and I had a meeting with him on December 2nd and I said, gee, I said, there's a perception out there that special things are going on in the back room. I said, we need to eliminate that perception because the membership they might not understand that there is a reason why we have these special exemptions or whatever. He kind of explained to me, and I'll let him, you know, when he gets up here, he explained to me that at the time, he's kind of inherited some things from previous management. Well, that, that's fine, but, you, you know, you got, you got to put a stake in the ground. If the, if the resolution says December 1st, that's what it should be. Go to the board, get it changed, and have it any five continuous months. Well, you make a very valid point. Thank you. Jim, appreciate you need, all your time. Uh, you need to speak to this. I think this was brought up before. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it was. Jim, before, um, before we get started, there's no other um, that I'm aware of. There's no other circumstances other than some are are starting in November and others are starting in uh, December. Are there other deals? The membership now is being sold as a five-month membership. Um, it's being sold as any five months. The well, well, I'm I'm just telling you the, what's happening. Well, who authorized that? I authorize that based on how the membership was sold last year. So well, you're outside uh, the basic uh, framework that we we developed. Am I wrong on this? No, you're not. We need to get back to basics, Jim. If I mean, I know it's a marketing situation, and I know you're looking for more members, but if you need a sliding. Uh, what bothers me is Mr. Camp's comment about backroom deals. And I'm not aware that it was a sliding. In fact, you were asked to break down the five-month memberships, and the list I got was November to March, and then there's another group, December through April. Nothing else. So um, we need to... We need to reevaluate that. As far as I'm concerned, until we do, um, any further stuff is on hold. Is there? Do you have any comments, members? Uh, I would. <clears throat> I got one comment. I didn't realize this existed, but at the same time, I think we need to look at something different in this. Uh, I. December, January, February, March, and April is our expensive months for outside play. Maybe I'm all wrong, but if you extend that, if you move that to January through May, I think you give them, I think we gained on it in the fact that all of a sudden the, the green fees went way down in May. And if we move it the other way, if we move it up earlier in the fall, they're in cheap green fees. So, Maybe that's not as far wrong as what we think, guys. Uh, it, it doesn't agree with policy. I have to say that. Maybe policy is wrong. Supervisor White, that, that's correct. And so the, there's two discussions here. You know, fiscally, if you have a $10 ticket and someone asks you to buy something that you sell for $8 for 10 
you would agree. I think the other discussion is that we put something in print, it was specific, and we didn't specifically follow it. And I'm with the Billy Casper Company, and I'm here to take responsibility for that. It should have specifically been done by resolution to expand it to any five months and gotten the approval of the supervisors, and we wouldn't be here having this discussion because it does make valid business sense, especially when you look at, you know, there was no secrecy about the five months this year when someone came in. As many people picked other than December through April as who picked December through April. So it, it wasn't a secret. There's no secrecy to it, but it didn't match up with what was put in print. Well, so that was there, that was the problem with it. Well, is there any extra concessions giving after the five months? So say if I take it uh, November through March, uh, and I'm staying part of April. Is there any extra concessions, or is it back no, to whatever the price? It's five months. It's five months. If you stay five months in a day, you'd pay a green fee for the for the extra day. So, um, you know, to me, it was a misinterpretation by my predecessor and Casper of what the five months membership represented. You know, it's uh, obviously in print. It's specific by date, and that isn't the way that it was applied. Well, Jim, this this was asked of you on your watch and you responded with giving um, us a breakdown and i put it in the news i mean i put it in the news okay, letter but this sliding scale of going any five months i mean uh, this has to be brought back and it's going to have to be um mr mr camp makes an excellent point on this so as far as i'm concerned until we get this right and we get consensus from the board of what we want to do recognizing that a sliding thing may be a marketing thing but but uh, the perception that certain members are getting certain special benefits is really destructive and and i'm concerned about this i know the supervisor halbeck has been concerned about this before because if i remember he initiated some of these questions um, so. Yes, and we won't sell another. We won't sell another five-month membership. Unfortunately, when this came to me, it had already been executed. You know, it had already been executed. There wasn't any way to turn back. There's no way to turn back the time when it comes at mid. You know, the date that Mr. Camp came to talk to me was December the second. Pretty difficult to deal with five-month memberships that were sold in October and November mm -hmm. on a December well, 2nd who ma date. Who, who makes the decision whether or not it, it goes November or December? Is it Megan? No, sir, it was me. What did we do? Okay. What did we do last year was the question that I asked, and we sold those memberships last year outside of December to April. Might have been, might have been not to anyone's knowledge, I'm not sure. I believe if you talk to David Ford, David Ford will confirm that I had the same discussion with him last year when, this thing, when these things were moving around. Mm -hmm. He assured me that it would not happen again. But when you came here and you didn't even know about it, mm -hmm. my, my first conversation I had with you, you were you you didn't even you weren't even cognizant of the of the five month window. Because no one, no one told you about it. So once you checked on it, you found out that yes, they were violating it again. And that's not what the deal was, okay? And I, and I, and 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 Casper has to deal with it. It's up to you to deal with it. The problem, I guess, I guess the main main problem here is there's been so much problem with people violating policies and doing what they want to do and this board and other people just look the other way and I think a resolution is the law of the land the only you know uh, action of the board can only be changed by action of the board if people know that they need to follow it and I don't have any problem with that at all but I have a problem with people not following the uh, the procedures or policies, and I've gotten myself in a lot of trouble with it. Okay, and hopefully I'm not getting myself in trouble with it again. So that's all I got to say. What? Well, go ahead. I think um, when we talked about this once before, 
the the reason we changed this around a little bit was because there were people that would come down and they would start playing golf they buy their five month membership but then they would go back for the holidays and they'd lose a month okay so and, and just wait a minute Dave so then we decided that well we'll slide it so that they can have their five month membership later okay so we gave them a, cho- a choice where they could play November on their own ticket who is, and then who is we the board uh uh-uh. uh no, I'm sorry no sir not at all well, we Not have at don't, all. don't we have two times on the board? Don't we have two things on the board that says that the membership is either November through so and so, and then December through uh, April? I've got the minutes of this of this whole discussion, and there was a there was a lot of dialogue. There were several pages, and and it was and Ron Wonderling was the guy that was here at the time, and it was his his idea, and I think maybe Kurt had had some some ideas about it, but it was specifically set that those memberships are within this five month window. There was also rules that there was no family memberships. Okay, if you want, if 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 a family wanted to do it, they had to buy two separate. Right. And I, I I don't know where we're at on that. I think I've, there's still a question out on the ones that fall within that window. Is there any is there any family memberships in the window that are prescribed? Are are they buying separate? They're only single memberships. We only, only have, single memberships. We only okay. have two. We only have one couple who bought two five month memberships. Okay, so it's a fundamental problem with with we're not following the rules. It's like a speed limit. <laughs> you don't go over the speed limit. If you go over the speed limit, you can get a ticket. Okay. Well, we're into our peak period, so we have to resolve this very quickly. My suggestion—I well, apologize. Well, just, just, just a minute. My suggestion is that one member of this board sit down with you to address this whole situation, and bring it back to the board, and then we'll sort this out. And if it requires a new uh, resolution, then we'll have that. So volunteer for that. Um, Let Dave do it. Yeah. Larry, Larry volunteer. For Larry is volunteered. Larry, that should be quick because January's peak <laughs> is going to get. And Jim, I got to say, it's not the first time that Casper has has pulled this because we lost two employees, which by contract were to be reviewed by our general manager before they were uh, transferred. That didn't happen. So we're in um, a situation right now that I think needs correcting. And uh, so you and Larry will sit down, we'll bring you to the board, and there are no backroom deals. Okay? There haven't been any backroom deals since I got here on September the 14th. Well, and there won't be any backroom deals as long as I'm here. And I apologize because you you inherited this thing, and in, I mean the buck stops there. But I don't take it but personally. I signed up for this, and I actually <laughs> okay. uh, I actually enjoy it. This is my job. All right, uh, we'll need to have that back, Larry. By uh, next, we'll have it back before the next meeting. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. And Dick, I'd like to say we're going to research on our side. This is an advertised rate, so we may if we change. Uh, the actual rate schedule to eliminate December 1st through uh, April 30th, then we might need to re-advertise. I believe just what Kurt, uh, Jim said is that, um, again, the printed dates that we have in the advertised resolution uh, needs to be eliminated if the program is going to be a well, I expect a, a, Larry, it's a printing, Larry will sit it's with a printing you issue. That. Not yeah. and, and just to, and not to interrupt, but the the main thing when it comes to printing 
rates, those are once those rates are printed and have been adopted, we have to adhere to them. So, I, I, from what I'm understanding, is it's not that we're saying that those that what has been printed is going to be erased. We're saying we're also going to add something additional, which is some sort of a sliding five month period. Well, we're going to get back to the basis. This board sets a resolution in the con- uh, context and policy, and I'm not sure that rates need to be adjusted, but certainly we need to get this. This results dates. Yeah, it may only happen uh, with the with the budget process and the advertised rates that we put out next year because it's too late to correct. I think what's what's happened uh, this year, but I, mean, I, I don't do think we have a problem with rates. Yeah, if I'm understood, rates. It's not the rates; it's the dates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what we're saying is that the the dates that have been advertised are not wrong. There's also just potentially something else that may be available. Well, if we make something else available, we may need to advertise that. I want to well, research. The slip and slide has got to change. Okay, Larry, you're going to take care. Uh, Larry, excuse me. Virgil, you had a comment on this subject? Virgil A. at resident. If I remember those discussions, there was a reason we did 1 December through 30 April. So, Mr. White, when you have your discussion, if Dave's got the minutes and stuff, I would suggest that you review them and make sure that you're up to date on what those discussions were. Well, look, I think I think we all agree that anything that we can do to increase our membership from a marketing standpoint, we need to do. But, but again, Mark's comments uh, bring this to the fact that we are slipping and sliding from what should be an established policy that everybody adheres to. So that's what we got. That's what we have well, to address. Say, there was a reason that you all and, and they forward whatever agreed on one December two thirty eight. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Larry? Good morning. Larry Bertetto. Uh, we talk about marketing. Did anybody read the article in the New Sun uh, the other day about Turtle Run? It was a very good article about the whoever he called runs the newspaper wrote a very good article. On Turtle Run? Pardon? On Turtle Run? Yeah, I wrote, he played Turtle Run and he commented on the, he got here and the membership was very helpful to him and yada yada yada. It's all really? complimentary. Yeah. Really? I, I usually look at that online. I didn't see that. It's under sports, obviously, I guess. It was it. right on the front page. It was. Tanya, could you read? Um, fish that article out? I can, yes, sir. I'll send it to you. Yeah, that's uh, very good. You know I don't miss too many things. No, I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> and, of course, now that John Clark is deceased, that means probably, other than Rex Bond, I'm the oldest ranking person that comes to meetings. Uh, anyway, a question. We reach a section in our board meeting, and we have unfinished business. And some of the items that I've looked at, or talk, people have talked about in the last year or so, are no particular order. Some of it was answered. Where do we stand in completing the barn for the our equipment? Where do we stand with the Ponce de Leon project? Where do we so stand? Those have been answered. So okay. let me finish and then. All right. Then we go with, and this has been belabored for how long? What about code enforcement? We keep waiting for someone to respond. <laughs> Be frank with you, since Jerry Geoc left 12 years ago, we had nobody that gets off of their duff and does anything. And this is no reference to Mike, it's in reference to the guy that we got in code enforcement. We talked about building new signs. Is that still on? We got, now we've added drainage in Unit 5. We've added sidewalks for Ponce de Leon. We've talked about a marketing plan. And we talked about the EMS and fire station. And all these things have been pending for a long time. Would it be advisable? somewhere in our format or our agenda that we have not at length but just a short description of all these things and where the priorities are on when we need to get them done 
I mean, some of these things we've talked about year after year after year. Well, the signs are coming, and the board has been advised that there's been, what, a change to late January when they're going to be installed? The two front entrance signs will be yeah. the last week of January, and, yes. And, and you're right. That, Tanya, that should have been mentioned at, uh, at the meeting on the report. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Just a short, you don't have to be a long explanation, but here are the things so that people, if they look at it, they say, well, hey, you know, people in Unit 5 can say, hey, they're looking at our, our problem. The people on, on the Ponce de Leon sidewalk, you know, can say, well, that's being worked at and it's probably, we're doing this. Just a short one-liner. I, I think that would be a help to us. Okay. Thank you. No argument from me. Thank you, Eric. Where does he want this? Good morning, Bill Norcross, uh, resident uh, on the golf committee, uh, chairman. I have a couple of questions, and I don't know how to approach it without stepping on somebody's toes. For a couple of years now, I've uh, requested a, a couple of things be done. One was a speaker to be put on the grassy area out there to reinstall it. And another one to paint lines on the driving range, uh, horizontal, so we don't have people getting boxed in and upset and uh, possible accidents. Now, I asked uh, Dave Ford, for the length of time he was here, to please ask to have it done, fixed. And it doesn't seem to be to be acted upon. Now, what is a procedure? Who do I see? I know Jim is, he's heard this in the uh, meetings a couple of times, and, and they said painting the lines, well, we're going to we're gonna buy a machine, $1,500. Okay, fine, which is a great idea because you can paint more lines with it. You can paint parking area lines. You can put uh, crosswalk lines, whatever, whatever. But the speaker system, it just has to be reattached and it's a, it's a functional thing because people don't know when their starting time. Is it five minutes of 12 or is it five minutes of uh, one or afterwards? It's, it's a frustrating type of thing. So it's just a matter of communications. So do I have to put an RFP? Who do I see? Do I run through Jim here to make sure everybody knows about it? I've spoken to a couple of you guys on the side, but I mean... Watch it. Remember what I told you about that? I have to make that. sure there's only Remember one of you. I told you about that. <laughs> all right, so look, uh, I really appreciate all the work that's being done at the golf course, and, and I think all the golfers do too. But, you know, just a couple of simple things like fixing a speaker, putting lines you're talking about appropriate. The, you're talking about the speaker there in the golf cart parking area? No, the speaker that's on the cart barn. The Boston thing, cart barn. <laughs> he's, he's talking about uh, to the north side of the cart barn where they gather like on a Wednesday to, for the Doug Cole group to go out. <laughs> Wednesday have, is a group there. There's about no 90 idea, people. You have no idea when it's been released. All right, so who do I see? We're cleaning the barns where, uh, where the maintenance area is being moved. We found, we found two speakers. We are in the process, and I talked to Jim about putting a speaker where Bill's talking about. Bill never came to me, so I didn't know anything about this, which I'm surprised because he... I there, there you go. Like, there you go. The process, I know. We are in the process of putting a speaker out there. All right. With no cost except for just the wiring. What, what are these lines you're talking I about? I don't know what is lines. I don't deal with lines. So. All right. Uh, we, <laughs> I hope not. Uh, the lines on the uh, driving range are uh, just, uh, uh, I guess you want to call uh, the vertical parking. In other words, it'd be like... Uh, uh, Halle, what do they call that? Uh, a suit, it's Halloquin or whatever it is, you know? Diagonal. Yeah, it's diagonal, whatever it is. And it just makes it more functional, more professional, more 
uh, it makes it safer because the parking would be this way instead of this way. So it's a simple little thing and the parking area out back where all the golf carts are and back of the clubhouse. Uh, if we could just pick up one or two more parking spaces, that would be uh, a good deal because it's really, it's really crowded out there. Well, why don't you put that in the form of communication to the uh, to Jim with a copy to the board and you get some action. Okay. I'll just submit my many copies. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah, okay, it. Okay, Bill. Tom Costey, resident and member of the golf uh, golf club. Um, I'm, if I would like uh, to be straightened out on something, it seemed to me back when we uh, uh, maybe several years ago, the board decided that a resident of Sun and Lake that being somebody who's paying an annual assessment to Sun and Lake, would get the lowest rate available for a round of golf as is being offered on a particular day. My question is this. If Tanglewood comes in with a group of, say, 30 golfers, and Bill Kitchens, who's not a member, comes in on the same day, is Bill Kitchens playing the, paying the same rate for his round of golf as the members of that Tanglewood group are paying for their round of golf? It's supposed to happen. I don't think that's the way I remember it. I don't think it happens that way. It's not. Ha I don't either. It, uh, as I understand it, it's, and this is just my understanding that it is the lowest advertised rate, not a group rate. So if the if it's advertised in a one of the flyers or something that let's just say it's forty dollars regular, and if it's advertised at thirty three dollars in a flyer, that would be the rate, not the thirty dollars or whatever tangle would play. That's my understanding. But this discussion took place, I think, before you were on the board. Yes, it did. And when that decision was made, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that that resident, about somewhere between 25 and 35 percent of his annual assessment, is finding its way into the golf support of the golf operation. And that on that basis, he deserved to be able to pay the lowest rate that anybody on the golf course is paying for his round of golf. Back to you, Jim. <laughs> Jim Kurtz, board and general manager, Sun and Lake Golf Club, Billy Casper. I'm not intricately aware with really what we're talking about with these rates. Uh, I do know that for groups that we do discount rates to procure groups to play at times that are less desirable to the membership. Uh, so I can do research and I will definitely bring to the May budget meeting you know, my estimations of how our budget will change if we eliminate those groups. Uh, because we do give them preferential pricing and if we don't, they're not going to come. So it's pretty much that's that's the bottom line on the groups. We do it to meet our budget and to, you know, defer what the income from dues would be. So, in other words, Tanglewood, when they play on Tuesday morning, I believe, you know, brings us 60 or 70 players, and they play for a rate less than the advertised rate for Sun and Lake Oh, okay, but the Resident. advertised rates, which we all reviewed back in the budget, um, and, and, and Mr. Costey is correct that we made a decision definitely that every resident that wanted to play around the golf would certainly receive the lowest advertised rate. Now, I don't, I don't think that comes... Yes, it does, Tom. I don't think that, that, that covers the... the um, the group negotiations because we've had that we go back and forth on that and we don't want the groups to leave so we negotiate um, but are, are our residents receiving the lowest um, advertised rate yes sir I will double check it but it is my understanding and I'm virtually certain that if we ran a special on Sunday 
and the special stated $29 to play, and our resident rate was $40 for Sundays, that the resident would receive the $29 rate. You know, someone off the street as opposed to a resident. So non-group play, that is happening. Um, with group play, I do know we are you know, discounting rates to fill space. Um, in fact, in December, part of the reason uh, that we were a little softer in December and hoping to come back in January, February, and March is that we lost one group uh, because we raised our, you know, raised our price a couple dollars, which was still well below the member rate, um, and they chose to leave. So it is, you know, it's a it's a business decision. Um, but to straight directly answer the question, yes, for you know, for someone off the street coming in for a special and a member, they're they're getting the members getting the lowest rate that we give to an individual that day. All of our people behind the desk in the golf shop are well aware of, of this policy? Yes, sir. No question about it? I don't have a doubt about it, no, sir. Okay, and uh, if somebody says they're a resident that they don't know, they ask for... Yeah, they should for a ask for well. documentation, yes. Yeah. Okay. Tom, I don't know what else we can do on that, because these group things, these group things are, are a marketing and a revenue source that we can't afford to lose. I understand, but your explanation to me is then that I misunderstood what was agreed to a couple of years ago when you guys discussed it and said that a resident would get the lowest rate available on that particular day. Well, That's the way I remember that we're, discussion. We're kind of splitting hairs here, but the, the so. answer is yes, the advertised rate, the group rate, no. So I may be wrong. I don't know, okay. but that's, that's well, the way I see it. Probably could check it in the record, I would okay. think. Okay, that would be good. Uh, Pat Holmes, resident. Uh, uh, pertaining to the five-month membership, why don't we make a resolution for the next meeting to get this adhere, taken care of, that the five-month membership can be any five months throughout the year instead of uh, going on and on. Because if you bring us back next time, we won't, you won't vote on it until the time after because you don't have a resolution for it. Well, we may have that. Larry, uh, Larry White is charged with uh, negotiating and looking at this, and uh, there's no reason why a resolution couldn't be prepared for the 22nd meeting based on what, what they come up with. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Make sure we have the resolution well, next time so you can vote on it. The wheels of justice will turn as fast as they can. <laughs> and uh, I think on, on the membership, uh, not on the membership, uh, but the lowest rate, I think it was... Uh, at the time, I may be wrong on this, that the, if, if you're, if the rates are low, let's say on Thursday morning, at that time of the day, you can get the same rate as uh, the outside group is playing. Not through the whole day, but for that time of the day. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong on that. Well, you bring up a good point. We'll check on that, too. Rex Bond, a resident of Sun and Lake. I lost my notes, so I have forgotten <laughs> whose place we would go to for lunch today. But if you'll follow Dick Miller, it'll be perfectly all right. All of this discussion is fine. However, this board and you people as uh, ratepayers uh, pay folks to manage the district. Eighty percent of the questions that you have raised should be dealt with the general manager. Folks out here in the audience that have questions about the management of the district, go to your general manager. Call her. I haven't spoken to her, but Call her and set up an appointment if you have a problem. But when it comes to policy, with you folks having to dictate policy, you're taking a lot of time of all these people out here. And it's a pretty good crowd because we don't normally have this many, but I understand that you're not going to take up a collection so we can be perfectly comfortable. But you don't bypass the management. Uh, they have a, a job to do. 
And uh, if you outline what that is, and I notice some changes being made in some of the publications, then everybody should be all right. So direct your comments to them. For instance, golf. Some of you have heard that we have two beautiful golf courses, and we do. But we should have an active golf committee to come before this board and present the, the requirements of the, the golf operation. For if all the golfers, 200 plus of them, came down here and had to get permission from you folks, you'd have a full-time job and you could probably make another five or ten bucks a month. Uh, but uh, you, you certainly need a golf committee. Yes, it'll have to be a sunshine committee. There'll be no back room. Uh, smoke-filled rooms making those decisions. Rex, we do have a golf committee. I beg your pardon? We do have a golf, golf committee, and if, if you were, you might have been distracted, but Mr. Norcross is the chairman of that golf committee. Is that appointed by the Board of Supervisors? Yes, it was. And when do they meet, and uh, how, what kind of a notice do they give? Second Tuesday, I Tuesday night every month. Tuesday in the morning, 9 o'clock, the second Tuesday of the month. And, and you represent the golf community here. I appreciate that. I've lived here 20 or 30 years and never did know that. But uh, that's the way it ought to be. And if they have a problem, then they need to work it out with him. And if he can't work it out, then you come to the board and let the board handle it. Drainage. Very little has been said about drainage. You have major drainage problems in this district. They're going to have to be fixed. It's going to take money. And we're in some discussion, I believe, with different property owners about who's going to pay. This board will have to figure that out. Drainage affects everybody in this district, not just five, six, or seven people. I don't live near uh, Phase 5, but I have drainage problems. And other places around in this district, we have serious drainage problems. They have been ignored. So we need to do something about that. I want to say that we need to put on our list of improvements, and we've taken care of everybody but the group I'm going to speak about, and that's Little League Baseball. We don't have anything for the kids like this. It's, it's like this. Somewhere along the way, we need to come up and, and set aside some area uh, that we can build or have the county participate in a Little League ball field out here. We've taken care of everybody else in the basketball, kickball, golf, swimming, uh, and, and things like, oh, pickleball, I forgot about that, that's very important. Uh, so we, we need, we've got some programs that we need to be pushing along. Yes, we do have young kids that live out here, and young parents uh, go out to the Y, some of them that I know. Uh, have to take their kids out there because of uh, the lack of facilities for that age group. The other thing I'm just going to mention, and then I've finished, and that'll be a blessing to most of you, Mr. Halby. We have to be very careful in establishing rates that we do not charge the public more or out of proportion to what we charge our local residents. Because we have admitted publicly that our facilities are supported by the public and we offer them to the public and they can use them. But then when we get around to talking about the do re mi fa sol la si, it's money. Therefore, that's where we change gears. That is more important to the public. Rex, Rex let's be clear about this. Sorry? The facilities that we develop here in Sun and Lake, the recreational facilities, 
are bought and paid for and supported by the residents of this district. And they come first. So what we have is a two-tiered uh, system for our, our clubs, our, our pickleball, and, and swimming and so forth. Our residents get one rate. The general public, if they want to take advantage of our facilities, they get another rate. And that is perfectly uh, acceptable. Everybody has, has endorsed this for several years. So that is clear. What we were talking about this morning about the basketball court is that when we accept county money for a facility, then we're obligated to open that facility to the general public. And the only situation, correct me if I'm wrong, Tennille, is on the basketball court. Is that correct? In the playgrounds. In the... The picnic, this whole area out here, aside from the pool, is all open for public use. Okay, outside of the pool. Right. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. I'm just saying we must be fair and equitable in our charges, not just to the residents of Sun and Lake, but to the public in addition to Sun and Lake. Well, I think we've done that, and... Uh, uh, none of these fees, just so you know, none of these fees come anywhere close to supporting the expenses connected with those facilities. So is it, whether it's golf or pool or pickleball or so forth, um, this is a community um, amenity that's supported by the residents. So they get first crack. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Rusty Crino, resident. The last meeting that I attend, I was very concerned about, and that was Resolution 53. That was. Uh, I can't hear you, Rusty. Could you speak up, please? Yes. Rusty Crino resident. The last meeting I attended was um, in the, in 2015. There was a resolution number 53. To me, as I thought about it up until this meeting, was very very disturbing. Disturbing in that a person used their position to try to push through a resolution that was not beneficial to this community. And in doing so, I looked at, in, in my opinion, that that resolution was very vindictive, intimidating, and frivolous. Not to say only that I think it was costly to us. Costly in the fact that this person initiated this thing took up the time of our general manager and probably also took up the time of our attorney in possibly doing research into this. So it cost this, this district monies, and correct me if I'm wrong, in doing so. And these two people that I'm talking about possibly was an intimidating factor because of their position. And I think they should uh, be free of any kind of intimidation because of their position that they've got to uh, follow through on this particular person's wishes. Are you talking about the trespass resolution? Yes, sir, I am. Well, that was dismissed very quickly. Okay, well, I just want to make sure. That's exactly what I'm talking about, number 53. I think that it should never have gotten to this point. I think that some uh, safeguards should be put in place so that this does not ever happen again. Rusty, just just for your your benefit, um, any member of this board can propose an agenda item. Okay, that's okay. that's a given. And that, that resolution was the work of one member of this board okay. that was put forward, and, it, and, and that person had that right to put that on the agenda, and it was dealt with very quickly, as you well know. Okay. 
but my question was I don't mind a person putting forth uh, their item that they feel free but I felt that that as a person setting out there that it was a frivolous type of piece of work that was given well I was dealt with, it was dealt with accordingly okay well anyway I would like to finish if I may yes okay I think some safeguards should be put in place and the one safeguard I'd like to see is that any resolution just should have the sponsor's name on the the resolution that is being introduced so we know who exactly uh, where this is coming from I think that they should uh, put their name on it so that we don't have the anonymity involved here thank you you know that last comment was a good point because um that person was not identified, but yet when I put an item on the uh, on the board earlier to uh, terminate Mr. Wright and again terminate uh, Mr. Griffin, my name was attached to that. So why wasn't this person's name attached to that resolution? If we're going to be consistent, let's be consistent. If we have one member that's it's proposing something, then there's no reason why it shouldn't be identified. Mr. Mr. Hallbrook has been identified wanting to put Absolutely. something out. And Absolutely. And I've been identified as wanting to put something out. I, you know, and in uh, my thinking about this, I was re referring back to issues many, many years ago when we had resolutions back in the... We had the... Uh, so-called what I call the citrus canker gang in that we had resolutions pop up we had a special meeting where we changed the uh, uh, you know you smile it where we changed the uh, collection of taxes all of a sudden but they never identify and this is where I was coming from as well. well some you know, of us still have the scars from those yeah. days. So I, that, that was a special meeting that was called, and there was one supervisor that wasn't wasn't notified of the special meeting, it, so it, he didn't show up. Okay, and that who was, was that? Me. Thank you. Uh, that's, Remember that. Okay, so this was this was my intent when I'm saying I think uh, uh, it's just like anonymous letters to the editor; they won't publish them. I feel the same way should be in the same vein as resolutions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rusty. Anybody else? Back to the board. I guess we're talked out. Meeting is adjourned.